Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well, we're going to use a bit of absolute positioning today to create a pop-up info section. If you look at the dark section below, if I roll down, you'll see an icon to the left hand side. If I roll the section up and down, you can see it stays within that section. That's absolute positioning right there. And if we hover over it, it's going to pop out and reveal some text and information for us. And when we get off, it's going to go back to how it was and roll up with the section there. This is really easy to do. We're not using any coding or any extra plugins for this today. We're just using the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's go down where we want to work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete our little blurb module that I've got up there. And we're actually using a row for that. Because it's absolute positioning, sometimes when you use fixed or absolute positioning, your modules are kind of hard to get to because they'll be behind other things. If that's the case, hit the little purple button down the bottom here and we can go to wireframe mode and see everything in an old sort of back end type fashion there. So I'm just going to delete this row that contains our module there. And if I flip back now, you should see that that's gone or you should not see that that's gone. As you can't see, it's not there. If that makes sense. OK, well, let's get started anyway. To do this today, we're going to be using a row. So I've got a section here. I've got a row in it with four different modules in there. It doesn't matter what kind of section that you've got. Just go down. We'll add a new row to the bottom of our section. Now I'm going to use a column of three. It really doesn't matter too much because we're going to use fixed width with this. I'm just going to use a column of three and leave the right to empty. I'm going to use a blurb module for, for its icon value. There's a great new icon module that they just added. But today we're going to use the blurb module. OK, I'm just going to change my title to information there. Or whatever it is you want to say. And obviously put your content below here. Image and icon. Well, I want to use an icon. I'm going to flip this to on. And it'll give us our list of icons here. And they've just upgraded this list to include the great font awesome set so there's hundreds and hundreds you can keep scrolling for a long time or you can do a search for something specific but I'm going to use just a little exclamation mark for inf information here there we go as you can see that's popped that in there okay well let's close that then and if you want to link this module to anywhere if you want to be able to click on it and take them somewhere just below image and icon they've got the link box if you want the whole module to link somewhere, you can put a link in there. If you just want the title to link somewhere, you can put a link in here. And as always, best practice, if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking to somebody else's site or off-site, open it in a new tab so your site stays open. OK. Now, I'm not going to use a link on mine, so I'm going to move down to background. I'm just going to give it a black background. And that's all I'm going to do for the time being on this particular tab, content tab. Let's move over to our design. Image and icon wise, well, I'm going to make that icon a kind of light blue. Obviously, you make yours whatever color you want to make it. Roll on down a bit. I actually want it to be positioned on the left hand side. Size wise, that's actually OK. I'm going to leave that just as it is. I don't want any rounded corners or border styles or anything. But I will put a little bit of padding just on the top. I'm going to give it five picks. Just put in the five. It'll put the picks in for you. And on the left hand side, I'm going to give it five picks also. So it's slightly out from the edge there. That's great. Well, let's roll on down. I'm not going to use any filters on this today. The text, we can't read it very well there. Let's go in there and let's make it light in color. There we go. Now you can affect the title and body text separately if you want to with these tabs down below. Let's go into the title text. I think I'll capitalize it. I'm happy with the actual size of it, but I'll bring the line height down or up, I should say, line height up. So it's more in line with our icon there and gives us a gap at the top. So I'm going to pull this to the right and you'll see that information stretching out and getting more gap between it and the line below. 
So just get it where you want it, that works for me, that's fine. Not going to use any text shadow or anything. Okay, sizing wise I'm going to leave it just like it is. Spacing wise I want to give it a bit of padding on the right so these aren't buffered up and a bit on the bottom. So I think I'll give it 50 on the right. Again just put in the 50 or put the picks in for you. And let's put 50 on the bottom also. Okay, well that's kind of looking like I want it to look when people hover over it so they can read everything. So let's add a bit of magic now and make it shrink out so all we can see is the icon. And let's pop it up here in the left hand corner. Now to do that we don't actually need to affect the blurb itself. We're going to do that with the row. So let's save our changes to the blurb setting. Let's go into the row that it's sitting in, the green tab. Because I'm going to be changing the sizing and things, what I'm going to do is go over to Advanced. I'm going to go down to Visibility. I'm going to change Horizontal and Vertical Overflow both to Hidden. So that way if we change the size of it, nothing's going to spill out. That blurb module is not going to be spilling out of the row if we shrink it down. Well, while we're in the Advanced tab, let's actually position it where we want it. So we can roll down just a little bit more, you'll find position. I'm going to use mine as absolute. Now if I was to use fix, I could place it anywhere on the page and it would stay there. If I use absolute, it's going to, I can place it anywhere within the section that it's in. So that's what I'm going to use today, absolute. And you can see it's already popped up the left hand corner there. Put it in the middle, bottom if you want. But the top's fine for me. Now, of course, initially, all I want to do is see the icon itself. And then when they hover over it, I want it to reveal the actual information. So let's go into our design. And we're going to go into sizing for this. We're still in the row settings. Now for the width, I'm simply going to pull it down to where I want it. You see the black behind there? It's about right. But I've got percentage here. I don't want percentage. I want to actually use picks. So I'm going to say put in 45 picks. See how that does. That's not bad actually. I'm going to leave that. Now let's fix the height. Height wise. Let's try giving it 45. I'm pretty sure that's going to be way too short. So I'm going to say 45. It put in the picks for me. Yeah, that's too short. So let's just drag it up till we can see it sort of square type icon. There we are, that's going to work. That seems okay. 71. And you can increment up slightly with these here or you can simply type in a new value if you want. So it's exactly where we want it there. But that's how I want them to see it initially. But when they put their mouse on it, I want them, I want it to reveal the whole of that info. So common to most Divi modules, if you hover over any of the dark writing within a module here, you'll see some icons appear. For whatever it is you want to affect, go to that one, hover over it. If there's an arrow there, you can hover on it and set a desktop state, which is basically when a mouse is not on it. And a hover state, obviously, that's when the mouse is on it. So when the mouse is on it, I want it to be 100% wide, as wide as it was originally. So I'm going to type in 100 and percent. And as you can see, it's gone back to the correct width, but we still can't see the bottom part there. So we need to do exactly the same. In fact, I can just copy that, Control C, for the height. I'm going to hover over, get the hover state up, make sure you do this. You need it to do it for each one to affect that particular one. So for the height hover state, I'm going to hit the hover. I'm going to paste in Control V, that 100%. And as you can see, we can see the whole thing now. If I flip it back to desktop, we should just go back to the icon. There we go. Great. Now the time it takes by default to go from this to this with the Divi theme is 300 milliseconds, which to me is a little too quick. I'm going to slow mine down slightly. So let's go back to our advanced tab, down to transitions. And here's the transition duration. There's the default 300 mils. I'm going to take mine up to about three quarters of a second or 700, something like that. Obviously you put yours how you wish. I slow mine down just because I think it looks better to me. 
Transition delay, I don't want any delay. I want it to start as soon as the mouse hits it. And the speed curve I tend to use for this is ease in, ease out. That way when you take your mouse off, it'll ease back out again. Now there's one other thing I'm going to do with this. I'm going to save my row settings here. I'm actually going to go back into the module. And here's one of those cases where it's kind of hard to get to the module. Let's switch to wireframe again and we can get to that module a lot easier. There it is right there. And once we're in there, we can flip back. What I actually want to do is once it expands, I want to see a little white border around it. And I'm going to put a little drop shadow on it just to make it stand out a bit better. So to do that, let's go to design. I'm going to go down to border. I'm going to roll down just a little bit. I'm going to give it a border width of one pixel. Now initially I don't want to see any border, so I'm going to make it a transparent border. Bring up the little arrow. So for desktop I've got it a transparent border. For hover I'm going to give it a white border. As you can see there's a little slight border there you can see. So if we've done everything correctly, this should work now. And just to make sure it's going to come in at the same rate as our row, I'm going to go to our advanced and transitions and change this to the same transition time, which I think was 700 and change that to ease in and out. And we should be good. So let's save our changes. Exit the visual builder. And let's go down. There's our little icon there in the section. When I hover over it, it's going to reveal our little info box. When I get back off of it, it's going to pop back to where it was and we can roll on down. And that's a nice little feature to have on your site. Like I say, really easy to do. As you saw, no coding or plugins involved into this today. So there you go, guys. That's how to create a pop up info box on Hover using Absolute Positioning. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.